the darkness running you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave I seated alone in glory enthroned in the highest praise you sent the darkness running out of an empty grave I seated alone in glory enthroned in your high Pray. You sent the darkness running out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned in your highest praise. You sent the darkness running out of an empty grave. Now seated alone in glory, enthroned in your highest praise.
The Bible says that if they would have known, if the enemy would have known what they were doing when they took Jesus to the cross, that they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. And he sent darkness running out of that grave. Can we just celebrate that this morning? Amen. That Jesus is the name above every name and he reigns above all. And we have victory in Jesus this morning. Amen.
God is the first step. Just that first step of surrender. Just such freedom and love and welcome in arms waiting. Freedom. My heart needs a search. My soul needs a prayer. I run to the Father again and again and again and again.
need him. so much. God, we thank you for loving us and that we can just lean into your arms, God. That we can just trust, trust you. We don't have to know the plan, though it'd be nice to know the plan, but we just lean into you, God. God, bless your people this morning. And we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. You guys can be seated. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Hey, it's good seeing everybody here this morning. Good seeing everybody with us online, Facebook and YouTube. Um, if you're here for the very first time, my name is Mark. I'm the pastor here. We're excited to have you. Uh, if I've never met you, hey, I'd love to meet you, connect with you real quick after service out there at our welcome area. We've got a free gift for everybody that's here for the uh, very first time. And today we are wrapping up our series, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. Um, I'm about to pray again, and the, uh, one of the things that uh, I like to do uh, or think, rather, when I wrap up a series is the final sermon in a series for me, I like to try to think I'm putting a bow on it, you know what I mean? And so we've been in this series for like six, seven weeks, and so today I want to try to put a bow on this series uh, of how do you do the stuff that we've talked about. So, uh, so would you pray with me today? Everybody online, you do this as well if you're able to. Let's just pray and ask the Holy Spirit to lead us today. Holy Spirit, come. That's our prayer. Father, we need the Holy Spirit. God, we don't need a fine sermon or a speech or a talk. We need an encounter with the living God. And Father, I praise you that you've already been here. God, we're, as we're just declaring that you reign above it all, that we are leaning into your everlasting arms, Jesus. We are, God, just expressing how we need you today. And God, as much as we need you, you want to give yourself to us more. And so, God, would you just wake us up today? Odds are high. People here, people online, uh, they're not looking for anything today. They just showed up. They don't even know why they showed up. God, reveal yourself to them today. God, for the person who comes every week, God, they want to meet with you, but maybe somebody's just filled with doubt, insecurity, something from the week. God, meet with us today. Holy Spirit, give us clarity of heart and mind and just help today be very practical and speak to us right where we are, exactly the way that we need you to, to, uh, to speak to us. God, we ask all this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. Like I said, we are wrapping up our series, Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. What we've talked about for six or seven weeks is how to break free from the power of the past. We've talked about how to listen to your emotions. So, so a lot of times in church we'll say, uh, you know, you're not led by your emotions. Obviously that's true. But what we've said in this series is God can speak to you through your emotions. And so, so how does that happen? We've talked about being with God. We, we've talked about in this series, that's why it's been an iceberg every single week. Because an iceberg, 90% is below the surface. 10% is above the surface. You only see 10%. And that's the way I am. That's the way you are. That 90% of who we are is under the surface. Most people don't see it. We only show the world usually 10%. So every week in this series has been how do you bridge your inner world with your outer world? How do you bridge your inner world with your outer world? And the question that comes up several times in this series, some of you have asked me, is, Mark, can we really do this? I mean, can we really bridge our inner world and outer world? Can we really break free from the power of the past? Because I got quite a bit of baggage back there. Mark... Can we really hear God speak to us in our emotions? Because, Mark, you need to understand, i got a lot of anger in here. i got a lot of bitterness in here. Mark, can we do this? And I just want to say to us, we can. We can do this. And the reason that we can do 
everything that we've talked about in this series is because of something that's so simple. I'm about to say it, and it is not going to blow you away. It is going to bounce off most of you, and you are going to be like, we got up early for this, but I promise this is the reason that we can do this. And so here it is. The reason that we can do everything we've talked about in this series and, and bridge your inner world with your outer world is because God loves you. See, I told you the 930 did the same thing. The 930, 20, half people just got up and left. We don't know if we'll ever see them again in the 930. It was crazy when I said that, right? I'm just joking. But here's the deal. Everybody responded that way because you're like, what? Man, I know that God loves me. And here's the deal. If that's you, if that's you online, you're hearing this and you're thinking, oh my gosh, is that it? God loves me. That's like straight up Sunday school. I know this. Here's my question back. Do you? Do you know that God loves you? Because here's the deal. This is something that I want to drill down into us before we dive into what we're doing this morning. Here's the thing. I think this might be on the screen. If not, just, to, just write it down. The love of God is not supposed to be an idea or something we say but doesn't impact our lives. Oh, I know that God loves me. <laughs> the love of God is supposed to be a reality that we're learning to live from. So the love of God is not supposed to be some Christian bumper sticker. It's not supposed to be something that I say and you amen, and then you're like, oh yeah, but that doesn't impact who I am on Wednesday. Summit, listen to me. The love of God is actually supposed to be a reality that you and I are learning to live from more and more. But the question that I want to try to answer in the next 20, 20, uh, 20 25 minutes is how do you do that? How does the love of God go from an idea? Because an idea is not going to change your life. So how does the love of God go from an idea to a reality that you and I can live in? That's what I want to try to answer in the next 20, 25 minutes. So if you've got a Bible, I want you to go ahead and open it up, turn it on to John 15. Now, now listen, as usual, if you've been here before, the words are going to be on the screen. Man, if you've got your own Bible on your phone, you use that a lot. Maybe a physical Bible, you use it a lot. You brought it. Use what you got, that, okay? So you can take notes, highlight it, that sort of thing. John 15 is where we're going to be at. We're going to read verses 1 to 11. And, and this is Jesus, okay? Jesus is talking here. John 15, here we go. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Watch this. Remain in me. Depending on your translation, your Bible might say remain or abide. Same idea. In these 15 verses, Jesus is going to use that one word over 10 times. So you know that's the big point. Okay, That's the main idea. Remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain. There it is again. In the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5 kind of crystallizes all of it. Look at it. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do, what's the last word? You say it. Nothing. Verse 6, if you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that's thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Think about that this morning. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commands and remain in His love. Look at verse 11. I have told you this so that, <clears throat> excuse me, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Everything we just read in those first 11 verses, this is Jesus telling us what a relationship with Him looks like. And Jesus does not say, watch this, that a relationship with Him looks like rules, looks like a bunch of hoops that you've got to jump through. Jesus says that a relationship with him looks like abiding or remaining. 
That, that word abide, remain, again, same idea. The word abide and remain, it just means to stick with. It just means to stay connected to. It just means to, to be a part of, okay? And the, and the vision, the image, rather, that Jesus uses to help us understand this is the image of a vine and a branch. Jesus is the vine, and you and I, we're the branches. And all the branch is supposed to do is just hang in there. That's it. Just remain attached to the vine. The branch gets its life from the vine. The branch gets its energy and sustenance from the vine. And so all Jesus says a relationship with him looks like is you and I abiding in him, remaining in his love, staying connected because we are branches and he is the vine. So like we've said in this series, Summit, listen, you can't abide with Jesus if you're always going 100 miles an hour. Amen? You, you can't abide with Jesus if you're ignoring your limits. Like your body is telling you you need a break and your body is telling you you got to get some more sleep and you're just ignoring it because you can, you can rest when, you know, later on or the devil never takes a day off. Have you ever heard people say that? The devil never takes a day off and the devil is a bad role model for your life. Side note, just don't model your life after the Lord of darkness is good advice, I feel, right? You can't abide in Jesus if you are always trying to prove your point. You can't abide in Jesus if you are always trying to prove how right you are. You can't abide in Jesus if you are willing to climb the corporate ladder no matter who you need to step on to get to the top. You can't abide in Jesus if you're, all you're willing to do is divide with your neighbors instead of love your neighbors over every single issue. Jesus is telling us that the way that we do a relationship with him is abiding in him. So the question is, how do we do that? Let me ask you a question this morning, and you might need to write this down. You might need to, uh, you might need to think about it. What would it look like if the love of God for you was at the center of your life? What would your life look like if the love of God for you was at the center? So how does that happen? How can the love of God go from an idea to a reality you're learning to live from? How can you and I actually abide and remain in Jesus, not Sunday for an hour, but Tuesday night, Thursday morning, Saturday afternoon? How do we do what Jesus is talking about here? Well, if you've been around Summit for a little bit, what I'm about to talk about is probably not new. If you've never been to Summit before, odds are high what I'm about to talk about is totally new for you. But what we're about to talk about is not new. In fact, it's centuries old. See, to get the answer that Christians have always went to for how does the love of God become a reality I live in, not just an idea. How do I abide in Jesus like he talks about, John 15. To get that answer, we've got to go back to something that, that Christians have done for centuries that started with a group of Christians in Egypt. They're called the Desert Fathers and Mothers. Now think about this. Here's a group of Christians lived centuries ago, and they said that Egypt in their day and time was filled with so many distractions, so much temptation, that they had a hard time following Jesus. They had a hard time loving their neighbor. This is ancient Near East. This is Egypt. They didn't have a smartphone. Hello? Right? They didn't have everything that we've got trying to distract us and pull us in all kinds of different ways. And they just found that following Jesus in the world was really hard. So they made this decision. We're going to leave the city of Egypt and we are going to move into the desert. And we're going to build lives out in the desert with just us and God. This is where in modern day world you get monasteries, monks, things like that. But they said we're going to build a life with God in the desert so that we can come back into the city and serve God well. We're not trying to run from the city because we think that it's going to get, we're going to get contaminated. No, we need Jesus to forgive us for our sin. We're not running from Egypt. We are moving out into the desert because we want to have a deeper focus on Jesus so that we can come back into Egypt and see Egypt look more like heaven. And so these people built what's called a rule of life. And so the answer that Christians have always went to, how do we abide, how does the love of God go from an idea to a reality, is what Christians have for centuries called a rule of life. Now, now, look at me. I know some of you guys don't get caught up on the word rule. Don't get caught up on that. Some of you, brother, listen, I'm not about rules. I'm about a relationship. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Slow down. Slow down. 
All right? Because that's not what they mean when they use the word rule. When they use the word rule, they're using actually the original Greek meaning of the word. And the original Greek translation of the word rule is actually where we get our word trellis. How many of you know what a trellis is? Raise your hand. That's way more than in the 930. In the 930, it was honestly just a couple. How many of you, you have no idea what that is? Anybody else just want to honestly? Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for raising your hand. How many of you have ever seen what's in the picture there? How many of you have ever seen one of these before? Okay, look at all the hands. That's a trellis. Here's what a trellis is. A trellis is designed so that a plant, a flower, or something won't just simply grow on the ground. Instead of growing on the ground, it will grow up so that it will get all of the life and the sunlight and the sustenance that it needs to live. And so when they would say rule of life, they were talking about a trellis, a trellis so that, that helps the plant grow up so that it can get everything it needs to live. You see that plant on that trellis there? That trellis was a support system for the plant. And what we're talking about this morning is building an inner support system for your soul. How many of you here this morning when you heard that say, man, an inner support system for my soul, i got to get me one of those. Anybody think you need one of those today? Right? So let's go back to our question. What would your life look like if the love of God was at the center? Now, here's what I'm going to need you to do, and you guys are doing this, man, already, because oh, you, guys, you guys are just literally the best group of Christians that have ever been in the history of the world. You guys are amazing. Right now, you're looking at me, you're smiling, you're nodding. Some of you, this is how you've trained yourself to sleep with your eyes open for 30 minutes. God love you. And, but here's what I, but I promise you. I, I don't need you to do that today. I don't need you to do that today. I'm asking you to do something. I need you to engage with me. You watch it online, Facebook and YouTube, engage. Don't watch, engage. So if you have your phone with you, uh, open up your notes app on your phone. If you take sermon notes in the Summit app, I gave you a lot of space to, to work today. Maybe you want to grab a sheet of paper and a pen because you're going to need to write some things down and work this out for you in real time today. Some of this is going to mean you're going to stop listening to me and work on some things. If you don't have a sheet of paper, grab the connection card, offering envelope on the back of the seat. Use that. There's a pen somewhere. I want you to engage with me because I want to ask you this morning, what would an inner support system for your soul look like? Because it's not going to look like your neighbor's. The inner support system for a wife, her soul, probably not going to look the same way as her husband's inner support system for his soul is going to look like. Teenagers, you need an inner support system for your soul. And teenagers, the inner support system for your soul, it's not going to look like your mom and dad's inner support system for your soul. Here's why. Because you're different people. So the people you're sitting next to, this is not something you copy. This is not a test later on. You are talk we're talking about this morning building something extremely personal for you that works in real time, no matter how, how old you are, where you're at, that helps you walk in and realize the reality of the love of God. Okay? So hold, go ahead. Hopefully you've got a notes app open, sheet of paper, so that you can think this through. See, here's the way that a lot of us are living our lives, and honestly, I love you enough to tell you, Facebook and YouTube, you as well, it's a mistake. Here's the way that a lot of us are living our lives. A lot of us are living our lives, and, and listen, unintentionally, unintentionally, but a lot of us are living our lives in isolated compartments or buckets, and one compartment or bucket does not touch the other compartments or buckets. Think about it like a kitchen. How many of you in your kitchen have a place where the utensils go? Raise your hand. Okay, there you go. Put your hands down. How many of you have a place in your kitchen, say, where the plates go? Put your hand up. All right, put your hands down. Odds are high in the kitchen, everything is not touching everything because it's all isolated in its own place. Look at me. Great for a kitchen, horrible way to live. Because here's what happens. A lot of us, we have a God bucket or a God compartment of our lives. We have a spiritual part of our lives. Then we have a work part, a family part, a hobby part. And unintentionally, a lot of us have learned how to live our lives so that all of these compartments don't touch each other. So over here is the God part. And for too many people, the God part is Sunday for one hour. And the God part of your life, your God bucket, doesn't touch your work bucket. This is exactly why you can come to church every single week and sing about trusting in Jesus, how God provides for you, but throughout the week we're motivated and we're driven by the exact same way that most Americans live. Actually, get that off the screen for right now. We'll come back to that in just a second. Let's not give away the ending. Well, let's not let them know that Darth Vader's Luke's father yet, all right? So, 
If you don't get that, see me afterwards, all right? For a lot of us, our God bucket, let's get real controversial. For a lot of people that come to church, they have a God bucket, but the God bucket or God compartment of your life does not touch the relationship bucket of your life. And so you have never asked God, God, what do you think about the person I'm dating? You have never surrendered your sexuality to God. You have never brought your marriage and its struggles before the Lord. Why? Because marriage doesn't touch God and God doesn't touch marriage. Some of us, we have got all these things in our lives, these hobbies, these things, and the God bucket doesn't touch the other bucket. One compartment doesn't touch the other one. Listen to me. Let's give Satan the credit that he deserves. One of the biggest and greatest lies that the enemy has gotten us to believe is that you and I can live our lives isolated from one area to the other one, and one area doesn't need to touch the other one. So God is here, and here's the rest of my life. Look at me. You may be very comfortable living that way. You did not get that from Jesus. Amen? We just sang, you reign above part of it. No. Wouldn't that be weird? You reign above 10%. I got the rest. This is why I'm not on the worship team, by the way. And, right? And, <laughs> right? No, you reign above all of it. And so, so if I'm not going to be a hypocrite and mean what I just sang, it means I'm not going to have a God bucket and all these other buckets. I'm going to let God in all of my buckets. Does that make sense? If you live an isolated, compartmentalized life, the love of God for you is only going to be a, an idea, not a reality. You'll amen it, you'll put it on Facebook, but you will never learn what it means to abide in Jesus. So how do we do it? Well, the answer is what Christians have always called a rule of life. So now let's go to the next slide, what we had up on there a minute ago. We'll go ahead and bring that up if we can. Okay, so this is why I've got you go with your notes app open. This is why I got you with a sheet of paper and that sort of thing. I'm giving you an example of what a rule of life might look like. All right. Now notice a few things right out of the gate. At the center of a rule of life is not me, it's not you, it's not my life goals and ambition. At the center is the love of God for you. The love of God for me. At the center is the love of God. Another thing to notice here is notice God doesn't get a box. Did you see that? There's not a God box. Do you know why there's not a God box? Because God doesn't get a box. God gets all of it. Amen? God doesn't get his own box. God has all of the boxes. So, so let's start off with, how do you live from the love of God? Really hard if you don't build a relationship with him, right? It works the same way as your marriage, any other relationship. You've got to work at building the relationship. How do we live from the love of God? You've got to build a relationship. So that's called prayer. Prayer is building that relationship. And so here's just some examples of prayer or what it would look like maybe for you to build a relationship with God. We talked about silence and meditation last week. Slowing down, stopping, maybe for as long or short as you want, doing it in rhythm with your breathing. We talked about breath prayer last week. Remember that? Just in tune with your breathing. Inhale, Jesus, thank you. That is the oldest prayer Christians have ever prayed. The breath prayer of Jesus, thank you. Right? Silence and meditation. Maybe God uses silence and meditation really well in your life. Scripture, Listen, it's real hard to build a relationship with God if God's not speaking to you. God speaks through all kinds of things, but primarily through his word. What if you built listening to God through scripture into your life, right? For as long or as short as you want. If the only time you open the Bible is 30 minutes on Sunday, one day a week, can I tell you your soul is starving today, right? You eat more than once a week. Your soul needs a meal for, for more than 30 minutes. Worship music? Maybe you just love to worship on your own. And so instead of just listening to the radio, turn on some worship music, listen to some worship music, fasting, maybe going without a meal, some time on social media. So we're going without something on purpose so that we can intentionally spend more time with God. That's what fasting is. Here's the question. What spiritual practices help you connect with God? Do you know the answer to that question? Ah, oh, Summit, I hope you know the answer to that question. I really do. What spiritual practices help you connect with God? God has given you literally thousands of ways to connect with him. Do you know what they are? If not, you are invited by the love of God to figure it out. There's just some examples. So one is prayer. We are building a relationship. We, are, we want to remain in 
Jesus. So prayer. Let's move on right over there next to it, is rest. Rest is a way that you and I can live from the love of God. So we talked about last week. Here's an example. Sabbath. What's Sabbath? Sabbath is 24 hours where you stop, rest, so literally take a nap, whatever, sleep in, whatever it looks like, get some rest that day. Delight, enjoy the creation, enjoy God's gifts in your life and spend some extra time in worship. If 24 hours is too much for you, take 30 minutes. Give God 45 minutes this afternoon and Sabbath for 45 minutes this afternoon. Mark, what could I do for 45 minutes as a Sabbath? Some of y'all need to take a nap, right? You're just real grouchy, and it ain't because you ain't praying. You just need to get some rest like you're testy, all right? Here's this one, exercise. I just put this in here for me. Can I just tell you God uses running in my life? Like, I hear God speak to me when I run. Running is very spiritual for me. I have no idea what running does for my body, but I know that running is doing something with my mind. And, man, running is just a way for me to connect with God. Maybe you meet with God at the gym. Maybe you meet with God as you're working out, that sort of thing. Here's this one. This is really important. A well-planned vacation. Y'all know why I say a well-planned vacation? Have you ever had a poorly planned vacation? And then you've got to have a vacation from that vacation. Then you've got to sign up for counseling. My good, you know, do you know what I mean? A well planned, we're going to go there here. What are we doing? We're going to rest. We're going to just enjoy this. We're going to just sit at the beach and do nothing, right? A well planned vacation. Sleep. Sleep is a gift from God. And the church said amen, right? Sleep is a gift from God. The only person who does not lead, need to sleep is God, okay? If that's not you, go to bed, okay? <laughs> Limiting social media. I'm just telling you, Facebook is not an inner support system for your soul. The data is in. L literally, Google it. Google the mental of health effects of social media on teenagers, on adults, on senior... The data, the data is in that this is doing something to me. So this is not a support system for my soul. So, so limit it. I'm done. No more Facebook. No more Twitter. Maybe for just a little bit during the day. But limit it. Here's one. Being outdoors. People tell me all the time, you know what? I really connect with God outside. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. Hiking. Getting out in nature. I love this quote. It's on the screen. Parker Palmer. Self-care is never a selfish act. It's simply good stewardship of the only gift I was put on earth to offer to others. Does that make sense? Here, if that doesn't make sense, let me explain that to you. What that means is this. The only way that I can follow Jesus is in this body. Does that make sense? I can't follow Jesus in another body because I ain't got one. I can't serve you in another body because like, I ain't got one. Right? Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. When I was in youth group, the only thing that said was don't smoke. That's all we got out of youth group. Your body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Don't smoke. Is that all it means? <laughs> is that all we got? Right? Self-care is an act of worship. All right? Here's this one. Relationships. Relationships are a way for you and I to live from the love of God. Listen, there are key relationships that you likely have that help you follow Jesus. Challenge you to follow Jesus. Encourage you to follow Jesus. So, your marriage, Right? If you're married, that's a key relationship, invest in that relationship. You have kids, key relationship. Maybe you're not married, you're single, you have friends, key relationship. Grandkids, key relationship. Hey, look at me. Church, key relationship. Church, key relationship. I'm going to say something, and listen, this might be controversial, and i got to be honest, I don't know why this is controversial. But now because of COVID, I get asked all the time, do we even need to go to church anymore? And all I'm telling people is look at the world, yes. And if I don't say that, I say, how's your soul? Because you just can't follow Jesus alone. I'm not trying to be, Facebook, YouTube, I'm not trying to be controversial. I'm not trying to be like all up, you know, mean, judgmental. I'm just saying that we cannot follow Jesus alone. Key relationships help us live from the love of God. Last one, last one, last way to think about your life centered on the love of God is work, school, mission. Why does it say that? Because listen to me, wherever you work is your mission field. Amen? It really is. If you're a student, you're in school, high school, college, master's level, doctorate, PhD, whatever, where you go to school, 
It's your mission field. So how can we go to work centered on the love of God? You will spend the majority of your life at work. Did you know that? I didn't mean to depress you today, but you're going to spend the majority of your life, odds are, at work. So how can you do it centered on the love of God? Here's this one. Cultivate gratitude and thankfulness. You cannot live from the love of God if all you do is complain about your life. Amen? You can't. In fact, that's the next series. We're starting next week called Thankful, Cultivating Gratitude and Thankfulness because you cannot live from the love of God if all you do is complain. Don't look at them. They'll complain that you're looking at them. All right? Building prayer in at key points of your day. What's that mean? We talked about this a little bit last week. Tomorrow when you pull into work, before you just get out of the car and just charge into the door, what if you turn the car off and you just took a deep breath in? <sighs> Jesus, thank you for today. Maybe you got a meeting that you're already stressed about while you're sitting here. You haven't even listened to me. You've just been stressed about that meeting. Before you walk into the room that meeting is, you grab that door handle. Before you open that door, just, <sighs> Jesus, help me. And you got a test this week, and you study for that test, but you're still nervous about it. Jesus, help me. Before you go to bed at night, you're laying in bed, you're about to go to sleep, just review your day. Just think all of the things that happened to you that day, and thank Jesus for your day. People say, Mark, what if I go to sleep while I'm praying? What better way to go to sleep is there than prayer? Amen? What better way to go to sleep than talking to God? Right? God's not going to get ticked off. Hello? Right? Build prayer into key parts of your day. Well, here's just some questions to help you. Who can I serve? Who's in your world that you can serve? Who can I pray for? Who in my world needs Jesus? Now, here's the deal. After going through all of that, let me just say something. And what I'm about to say is the most important thing I think I've said all morning that I'm going to say all morning, okay? If after talking about all that, all that we just now talked about for the, past, for the past 10 minutes, if you hear this or you leave in just a second and you leave and you're thinking, there is no way I can do all that he's talking about doing. And you just leave this morning feeling this weight, this burden, because you're like, oh man, did you see all the stuff that Mark gave us to do? Look at me. Then I failed you. Because I'm, I'm totally serious when I say this. this. This most important thing that I might have said all morning. This is not another thing to do. It's not. What we just spent, spent 10 minutes with, this is not another thing to do. Instead, it is doing what you are already going to do on purpose. You are already going to work this week. What if you went there with Jesus on purpose? You are already going to spend time with your family. What if you did it with Jesus on purpose? You are already going to get on social media this week. What if you got on Facebook with Jesus? Some of y'all need to, okay? Need to do it. The Holy Ghost is available, all right? Hallelujah. At, right, but what if you did that? What if you went into that test with Jesus? Because look at me. He is going to go in it with you, but you need to be aware of his presence. Did you know that we are not the only people in this room? Do you believe that? Do you believe that the only people in this room are the people that you can physically see? If so, you need to broaden your horizons because Jesus Christ is in this room with us today. Where two or more people gather in his name, Jesus said, I will be there with them. Jesus is not a liar. Well, I don't experience him. I don't see him. I don't feel him. What if the problem is not on his end? What if I need to build my awareness of him? Does that make sense? This is not another thing to do. It is doing what you are already going to do intentionally. But maybe you're thinking this. I mean, Mark, I get that. But for real, why would I even want to do that? Why would I even need a support system for my soul? Why would I even need a rule of life? In the Gospel of John, Jesus has seven I am statements that he uses to identify who he is to the world. The first one that we read in John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches. Seven I am statements. And look at what Jesus says here. This is who Jesus says he is to you, to me, to the world. John 6, 35. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. John chapter 8, verse 12. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 
John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. John 10, 11, and 14. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. John eleven twenty five. 25. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And then John 15. I am the vine, you are the branches. Listen to me. In none of those does Jesus say, I have come to give you rules. In none of those does Jesus say, I have come to ruin your life. In every single one of those, Jesus says, look at me. I have come to give you what your heart longs for. Your 401k is not telling you that it's the bread of life, and if you're hungry, come to it. Amen? No, seriously. Amen? And some of us are slaves to our 401k. We obsess over it. We dream of it. We change our lives for it. Your square footage is not telling you that it is the fountain of living water, and if you drink from it, you will never be thirsty again. Look at me. The American dream is telling you it is the way and the truth and the life, and if you give yourself to it, you'll find life in it. Look at me. It is a liar. If the American dream was the path to life, then why are so many people who have given themselves to it still have an ache in their soul? Here's why. You were not made for the American dream. You were made for God. You were not made simply for a 401k. Ain't nothing wrong with a 401k. But you were made for the bread of life. You were made for the fountain of living water. And I'm telling you that everything that you long for in your heart of hearts, you can only find in Jesus. Jesus Christ really can't help you break free from the power of the past. Why? Because he's the light. There's no darkness in him. Jesus Christ really can't help you break free from addictions and strongholds. Why? Because he's the bread of life. Jesus Christ is what your heart is looking for, what your heart longs for. And look at me. All Jesus is inviting you today to is life. And so what would your life, let's go back to our question, what would your life look like if the love of God for you was at the center? Here's the deal. It's not going to look like a perfect life. It's not going to look like a life that's got it all together. But more and more, It will be a life that looks like you drinking from living water. Would you pray with me today? Jesus, what an invitation. The invitation is to remain connected to the source of life for the entire galaxy, for the entire universe, for the entire cosmos, that we are invited to get life, to know, to stay connected, to have a vibrant, personal, intimate relationship with the one true living God. You are the vine. We are the branch. We were never made to make our own way, to be true to ourselves. There is no freedom or salvation in it, but there is life in your name, Jesus. There is hope in your name, Jesus. And so, God, I pray That as we've talked about for the past couple of minutes, what an inner support system for our souls would look like that every teenager would ask what that might be. That every mom and dad would ask what that might look like. That every grandparent would ask what that might look like. That everybody on Facebook and YouTube would ask what that might look like. What would it look like if the love of God was at the center? What would an inner support system for my soul look like? And so God... Just free us from the temptation of leaving a church service and leaving behind everything we just did in that service. God, some of us need to give some time to this today. Not just today, this week. And the reason some of us need to give time to this this week is because a lot of us have habits and patterns 
that are hijacking our souls. We are in a constant state of restlessness because we are not living on purpose from the love of God. And so Jesus, show us what would that look like for every one of us. Jesus, I thank you that all we're invited to today is life. All anybody watching us today online is invited to is life. That's it. And life more abundantly. So Jesus, you're the vine and we're the branches. Help us to abide with the love of God at the center. God, as we wrap this service up here in just a moment, Father, I thank you that we are more loved than we ever could realize. That with all of our baggage and all of our hurts and all of our wounds and questions, we are, in Christ, we are the beloved sons and daughters of God. And Father, if there is anyone here today who cannot say that for themselves, they, they don't think they can say that they're a son or daughter of God because they've never surrendered to you. They believe that you're real, but Jesus, they've never given their life to you. God, I pray in this moment that your love would change their hearts. They would just sense your love by the Holy Spirit overwhelming them and inviting them into a relationship. And so I'm just going to ask today, if you're here today in, this, in the room, and if you're online and this is you, let us know in the chat room. But if you're in the room today, and just you're listening to this and you're thinking, Mark, I want to give my life to Jesus. Mark, I want to surrender to the love of God. I want to know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If that's you today, I'm going to lead us in a prayer. And these are not magic words. You are not praying to me at all, okay? I'm just a guy. I have no, I have no significance in that at all. But all I'm trying to do is help you express what might be happening in your heart. And today, if you want to surrender your life to Jesus, just pray this prayer with me right where you sit. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sin. Come into my life and save me today. God, I give my life to you for the very first time. Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. Just with every head bowed, with every eye closed, if you just prayed that prayer to give your life to Jesus, if today you want to be saved, just put your hand up right now. I'm not going to embarrass you at all, but I want to give you this opportunity. Youngest to oldest, doesn't matter. If you're here today and you need to be saved and you want to be, would you just put your hand up right now so that I can see it just pray for you? Right over there is a hand. Thank you so much for that. Anybody else? Today I need to be saved. Just put your hand up. And again, if you're online and today you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, let us know in the chat room. Send us a message. Father, what a holy moment. God, to see people give their life to you, to come to you for the very first time. But also, God, what a holy moment to be invited in. And God, thank you that we're invited in tomorrow morning, on Wednesday night, next Sunday morning. God, that as long as we have breath in our lungs, we're invited in. And then as sons and daughters of God, even when this life ends, we are only welcomed into your loving arms. So God, as we receive an offering, God, I pray that you would bless those who give and the gift that's given. God, I pray that even giving would be a part of that inner support system for our souls, God, because we just want to break free from the idea that money saves us. God, you save your Lord, not money, but God, we want to use the resources you've given us to bless and make a difference in the world. So God, use what's given here and online to make that difference. Jesus, we love you, and we love you because you loved us first. It's in your name we pray, and all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Hey, listen, if you've been asked to help us receive our offering, would you come and get in place this morning? Just come on up, grab those offering baskets. Summit, we just saw at least one person raise their hand, say, I want to give my life to Jesus. Would you just show them how you're with them, congratulate them, support them? And here's the deal. We always ask everybody at this time, grab your connection card. Now, if you just wrote down your rule of life on your connection card, keep it, don't turn it in. That's yours. Take it with you, so don't lose it, all right? Can't take your, but, but let us know what God doing, did in your life today. If today you prayed to give your life to Jesus, let us know on the connection card. It's on the back of the seat in front of you. Check that box on the front. Or come to the welcome area. Let us know. We want to give you a Bible, some things to help you begin to follow Jesus. If that's you online, 
Let us know. Let us know what God's doing in your life today. Fill those connection cards out. Drop it in the basket as they come around. Hey, we've already prayed for our offering, so you guys can go ahead and uh, begin to receive it. You can go ahead and begin uh, to do that. As they're doing that, I want to mention a couple things to you. Number one, equip is tonight at 630. And so uh, we always kick things off with a meal. You can bring a dish, food, dessert. If you can't bring anything, bring yourself. We're going to dive deeper into a rule of life. We're going to give you some tools that we just couldn't do this morning, help you build one for yourself, that support system. So come tonight. I want to invite you to it. Hey, if you signed your kids up to be a part of the Christmas play, practice is today at 530. If you didn't sign your kids up, you can. Let us know at the welcome area. If you can't make practice tonight, that's fine. It's going to be next Sunday at 530. But the first, sun, first practice for the kids' Christmas musical is today at 530. And then Wednesday at 630 is our first Wednesday prayer gathering. And right after this service, Mary Brashear. Hey, Mary, put your hands up. Mary Brashear heads up our prayer ministry. She wants to have a really quick meeting uh, right after church. And right now, Dana Hall is going to sing a special I'm really not. for us. Go ahead and hit the music. I'm really not. Um, the, this is my, not my first rodeo, so I know that he knew that I was probably going to come up here. But anyhow, so the month of October is Pastor Appreciation Month. And so, um, man, it's been a rough time lately. Um, and I know that it's been a rough time for Mark and his family. I'm not going to cry. Um, but... During that time, do you know how many people I had that came up to me and said, what can I do for Mark? And then they told me, um, how much somebody in their family passed away that he was the first person that was to them or how when their marriage fell apart that Mark was there for, for them and how much that he has done for this church, for people in this church, for people outside of this church. And I hope that he always knows how thankful that I am for him how thankful we all are for him. And so um, so I just wanted to recognize him and give him a little gift and let you guys just show him how much you love him and appreciate him. Thank you. I literally never know what to do in this moment. I never know what to do. They didn't tell us what to do in this in seminary. And so I have no idea what to do here. Um, but I, I just want to thank you guys. Uh, not because that's what pastors ought to do in this moment. Uh, but I just want to thank you because my family just really felt loved by you this past month. And, uh, and this has been, it's just been really hard. Um, man, the first Sunday that I came back after my dad passed away, I really thought, I don't think I can do this. And, and it was just your, one of the things that just God kept using was your love for me, for my mom, and for my kids, and just, and just you being you. And so, man, I just, I just love you. And I'm just, you know, I'm not saying that because I feel like I have to say it. Like, I, I, just, I just thank you for what you've just done in the past month and just your prayers. And it's just hard. And so, you know, some of you guys just message out of nowhere. I'm just checking on you, and that, that just means a lot. And so just thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to cry because I don't know. I, it's snot, and it's just bad. I can't stop crying. And so, so I just love you guys. Thank you guys so much for everything, just everything, everything, literally. Love you guys. And uh, are, are we dismissing now? Are we done? All right. Thank you, guys. Hey, you're dismissed. Thanks. Thanks.